could artificial intelligence soon be doing my job? And what about designers, doctors and bus drivers? Will AI soon do their work? Major advances are currently being made in AI technology. And experts say it will radically transform the way we work. Could we all lose our jobs? Or is that just paranoia talking? That's our topic on Shift today. The McKinsey Global Institute predicts that up to 375 million people may lose their jobs to computers and robots. Hello, I'm an AI TV presenter. I'll say whatever I'm programmed to say. I'll be taking over from here. <sighs> Looks like AI can pretty much already do my job. This robo presenter was developed by China's Xinhua News Agency and is modeled on a real TV host. The advantage is, this fella never makes mistakes and never gets tired, which saves money. AI could take over a bunch of different jobs. Today, 71% of all work tasks is still performed by humans, with machines doing the other 29%. But a study by the World Economic Forum estimates that by 2025, the majority of tasks could be performed by machines. And some jobs have already been automated today. Airport information desks. Really? Learning a new language with a virtual instructor. Thank you. A robot run lettuce farm. These are just a few examples of areas where AI has already begun replacing humans. Artificial intelligence has made huge leaps forward and is ideal for doing repetitive jobs. At the University Hospital Mannheim, doctors analyze patient data using AI systems. Here, the software examines MRT scans and helps to identify tumors. The technology is self-learning. It uses millions of other example images to assess whether a tumor is malignant or not. It helps reduce the number of operations that aren't strictly necessary. Doctors seem to welcome the technology. Artificial intelligence isn't replacing us. On the contrary, soon we'll be using these systems much more than we ever have in the past. So they'll effectively be serving us and helping us bring together millions of individual data points. A US company meanwhile offers AI software to help screen job applicants. The program analyzes candidates' facial expressions and changes in their voices using algorithms. This gives employers additional information on which they can base their decisions. In the course of about a 20 or 30 minute interview, we can collect a couple hundred thousand data points about your vo voice, the vocabulary you use, your intonation, and your facial expressions and correlate all of that to success in a job. AI deciding if I'm a suitable candidate for a job. Spooky stuff. But what exactly is artificial intelligence? Alyosha Burchardt can tell us. He's a researcher at the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence, advises German parliament on the subject and is an expert on all things AI. He says there is not one single form of artificial intelligence. Instead, the term refers to all instances where software performs intelligent tasks that used to be performed by humans. Unlike human intelligence, there isn't a general artificial intelligence which can adapt to and solve various challenges. Instead, what we have are various different AI systems. One can steer a car, another can play Go. A third can translate texts, while a fourth can control an insulin pump. Each is trained with different data sets and uses a different technology. There are two kinds of artificial intelligence, referred to as strong and weak. Strong AI is basically capable of doing anything a human can. This is the kind that worries some people and lets the imaginations of Hollywood directors fly. We're currently nowhere near developing strong AI. Weak AI, on the other hand, learns one particular skill, like the ability to recognize images, where major progress has been made recently. Okay, so there are different types of AI. There's strong AI, which can perform any tasks humans can, though we haven't developed technology this advanced yet. And then there's weak AI, which simulates one human cognitive function, 
like judging someone's mood by analyzing their voice. One way of teaching weak AI systems is machine learning. AI used in the workplace is usually a type of machine learning software, meaning it can teach itself using data sets or experience. Here, smart software is learning how to recognize the number 9. It does this by breaking the image down into individual pixels. Each pixel has distinct characteristics. The neural network analyzes these and compares them with others and readjusts itself until it reliably recognizes the number. Great progress has been made in machine learning technology. One AI system recently managed to beat the world's best player in the complex Chinese board game Go. That system used a machine learning method called deep learning with neural networks. Neural networks are mathematical computer structures that mimic the human brain. The mathematical nodes are called neurons. These are arranged in various layers which are interconnected. Neural networks are especially suited for recognizing patterns in large data sets or for helping perform repetitive tasks. These systems learn through experience and adapt accordingly. So, not so easy to understand how neural networks work. To put it simply, if a network wants to analyze something, it breaks it down into its parts. For example, for a neural network to understand the difference between apple pie and cheesecake, it will first look at the recipes and study the ingredients or parts of both and find out what differentiates the two. This is known as pattern recognition and has nothing to do with creativity. But speaking of creativity, the French producer Jean-Michel Jarre thinks AI could make art. The emergence of artificial intelligence is going to change our lives for, for all of us on the planet, but also for, for artists. We have to admit that in the, ne in the next 10 years, algorithms, artificial intelligence will be able to create original music, original novels, original movies, and we should not be necessarily scared about that. The painter Roman Lipsky is also keen on AI. He uses software that analyzes and reinterprets his works. The machine learning system deconstructs his works and then rearranges them. Lipsky uses the AI-made images as inspiration and sometimes incorporates them into his new pieces. The movie and marketing industry is experimenting with AI as well. This car ad, for example, is based on a script generated by IBM's Watson computer system. The program was fed award-winning ads for cars and luxury products, along with data on the Japanese car maker and the project. That was the input. What came out is an emotional clip in which the car narrowly escapes destruction. Although the director of the ad was still a human, namely the award-winning filmmaker Kevin McDonald. I think we all like to flatter ourselves as human beings that we have a unique way of understanding the world that no machine could ever replicate. And I think that it's going to be very interesting when things that make us laugh and make us cry has actually been created by a computer. Designing is thought to be a highly creative task. The software company Autodesk, which creates programs for architects and designers, is currently testing an AI program called Generative Design. This software produces thousands, if not millions, of design ideas. With each design, it improves its understanding of what works and what doesn't. This software designed these slim partitions for planes, which are very sturdy but very light and can simply be printed out by a 3D printer. Who knows whether human designers would have had the same idea. Impressive stuff. But does churning out thousands of design ideas count as genuine creativity? And how do we even define creativity? That's a tricky question. Just like trying to figure out whether AI will make our working lives easier or just make our jobs disappear. Futurologists are divided on the issue. The dystopian take on AI goes like this. Major companies will invest in AI systems. These systems will grow increasingly powerful. Gradually, they will take over our jobs. Fewer and fewer companies will survive and unemployment will skyrocket. The welfare state as we know it will cease to exist. 
The more optimistic version sounds like this. AI will do all the burdensome, boring and onerous jobs for us. We'll have more time for creative pursuits and for social work. Finally, nurses and teachers will get the respect they deserve. Plus, we'll have loads of free time to enjoy. If machines can start doing, let's say, repetitive or dangerous or unpleasant jobs, then we as a society should start thinking about where people are needed precisely because they are people. Like in kindergartens, in the healthcare sector, in hospitals, in NGOs, or to help refugees integrate into society. I think the digital age is gifting us a fresh start, so to speak. It's allowing us to really decide how to organize and distribute work in society. Could AI therefore be a gift for us all? AI will definitely transform the workplace, though to varying degrees. In particular, it will take over jobs that are physically demanding and repetitive, as well as some creative jobs. But do we really want that? A recent poll shows that many Germans are skeptical about AI in the workplace. 76% say it's unclear who is liable when AI screws up. 68% fear jobs could be scrapped, and 66% of respondents said AI would dehumanize work. But those questioned also see some advantages. 48% believe AI will allow humans to focus on more important tasks, 34% think AI could help cut working hours, and 23% say it will reduce human errors. AI is a very powerful tool but it's not going to solve all of our problems, just like it's not going to take down the world. The important thing is to figure out uh, the, the, the match between uh, where the technology need is and what the technology is capable of. We as a society need to decide where we want to see AI applied before businesses make that decision for us. Some jobs will disappear, but new ones will emerge because we'll need people to program and control AI systems. What do you make of AI? Tell us on Facebook or on DW.com. See you next time. Goodbye.